I am writing to tell you how I really feel. You probably didn't notice, but for the longest time, I've always been there for you. I want you to know what I've done, and I hope by me opening up to you like this, you'll hopefully feel the same way for me, and we can be happy together forever. I remember when we were 13, when you first transferred to my school. As soon as you walked in, I thought you were the most beautiful girl in the world. When your tranquil blue eyes crossed mine, even though it was for just a brief moment, as you scanned across the strange faces in the class, I knew I wanted to be with you forever. But I was heartbroken straight away when you paired off by by some other guy to show you around the school. You didn't really notice me much. You were always with your group of friends who were so different to mine. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I never really had any friends. The, the one thing that got me through all those years of loneliness was watching you. Admiring everything you did. The way you gracefully went throughout your day without any faults simply left me in awe day in and day out. As the years went by, you seemed, you seemed pretty popular with both guys and the girls. You're sought after by all the popular guys in the whole school, even by the older ones. But you shrugged them off. The girls loved how you looked after yourself. You always had your makeup and hair so perfect, which made you admired and hated. It's sad, but it's human nature to get jealous, and we're all guilty of this crime. What they ended up doing, however, was far out of line. I saw as they pushed you when the teachers weren't looking. They would shove you into nearby hot objects, which more than often than not was the wall. When you stumbled and slammed into the wall, the teachers would simply turn and say, What are you going, dear? And then go on about their business blissfully unaware of what actually happened to you. With witnessing it happen every other day burned me up inside, seeing you have this torment for being better than them. It was painful to watch every time it happened. I had hoped that they would die down, but it just got worse. I saw when the bullies would knock your drink over when you least expected it. Just because the most popular guy asked you out. I was there when they set your bag on fire in woodworks class because they thought you were condescending when you tried to help them with their work. And I caught a glimpse of that one time when they actually threw you to the ground outside the school gates and kicked you until you cried simply because you tried to tell the teacher about what they were doing. After that incident, they followed you home. Usually they wouldn't do anything but yell abuse at you. But the worst part was, is that you would never know when they would snap and suddenly attack you when walking inches away from your back. It tore me apart to see the girl I loved feel so vulnerable. I wanted to fix it. What I knew was that there were three main bullies that were consistent. I knew more, but they seemed to do it out of pure pressure. The main culprit was that narcissistic whore, Bethany. Beth was simply jealous of everything about you. All the things I mentioned that made you great burned her up inside. She used to be the center of attention and my god, did she love it. All the guys wanted to be with her. And all the girls wanted to be her. The only difference is that she abused the attention for personal gain. She slept with most of the guys who showered her in gifts and had their mommy and daddy pay for everything. She only hung around with girls whom she deemed lower than her. And she did this so they wouldn't be a threat to her god complex. 
but slowly over the years of being in school she eventually lost her reputation and by then on you I had a disgruntled grudge against you was that asshole Chris he asked you to the school's annual dance in front of both his friends and yours and you simply rejected him like many others but what made his instance different is that he ran off crying because he was publicly embarrassed. And in school, that meant a lot. He denied liking you and lost all of his friends and reputation. And he took his frustrations out on who, who he thought had caused all of it. You. The last person was Julie. She had it bad for you ever since the guy she liked always talked about how amazing you were, while it's not paying any attention to her. Even after she performed some, well, let's say, desperate deeds for him? During the last week of school, I knew they had something special planned for you. So I took it in my own hands to deal with it, because I love you. And I didn't want your last few days at school to be ruined. The first person I convinced not to mess with you anymore was Chris. Now, he was much stronger than me, being all into school sports. And plus the steroids meant that I wouldn't be able to take him in a simple one-on-one -on -one fight. But in the end, that would be his downfall. It wasn't hard to figure out since our school's security reputation was so low. There was no need in hiding it. I got his locker combination by simply saying I forgot mine. And the teacher gave me a list of everyone's combinations. Yep. They have no sense of security in this school. I cracked open his locker with ease, leaving no trace of it ever being opened. I found the next shot he was going to use and squirted a little bit of it out. Then pulled the plunge back where it was, leaving a considerably sized air bubble. I figured Chris is no doctor, nor does he have any clue on how everything works altogether. He just injects himself and trains in the school gym. I bought a pass for the gym and pretended to train. He eventually came into the gym laughing hysterically with his friends. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. It's not gonna last long. <laughs> Said a thought that crept into my head. He went to his locker, and not long after he came out dressed in his training attire with determination on his face and was ready to start. He was fine for a while, but eventually slowed down. He had a puzzled look on his face and his, as his body slowly gave up. And eventually, the cardiac arrest settled in, and he was on the floor. People tried CPR, but there's no defibrillator around, since it was a school filled with teenagers. Who would expect a heart attack in a place like this? I smiled and walked out before the paramedics arrived. It was already too late for him. Working my way up the list, Julie was next. She was always working my way up the list, Julie was next. She was always jealous of the way every guy liked you. I silently slipped through her window without her noticing. I knew her parents were out were out, so if she made a noise, no one would immediately come to her aid. I pounced on her while she was sleeping, pinning her down. I tied her hands to the head post, to the bedpost, and then her legs. I pulled out several jars from my bag, each one almost black. Upon closer inspection, you would see small movements. They were full of all the creepy crawlers that one would temporarily find in the bottom of anyone's garden. I took my time filling up these with every insect. I could find. I wanted her to understand all the pain that you must have felt all the time that she was shouting abuse at you, hurting you, making you feel lower than what you really are. 
I propped her mouth open with one of those plastic rings a dentist would use for a long procedure. I slowly poured each jar down her throat. Every time her screaming was muffled a little more by the buzzing and scuttling noises the bugs made as they adjusted to their new home. Tears streamed down her face as I repeated how all this was for you. A few jars in, I could feel the bugs in her stomach, which were I had been sitting the whole time. By this time, she had pretty much passed out from the pain. When this happened, I'd wait, pour water on her face, and slap her until she responded. For punishment, I'd take off the ring from her mouth and pour water down her throat making her swallow all the insects and causing them to go into a frenzy of panic. Eventually, during the fifth jar, the pain of the insects burrowing into her inter internal organs plus all the internal bleeding caused her to pass away. But not peacefully, of course. I saved the worst for last. I had something special planned for Bethany. She was by far the worst to you. She made your life a living hell, and this was unacceptable. No one as perfect as you should have ever gone through the displeasure of knowing these people. So I carefully set the pieces and waited. One day, I got a head start. I skipped the last class, but no one would notice. Not even the teacher. This shows how much I was noticed in the school. By this time, I had memorized her route home and waited in the archway. I knew she walked past this area every time. I waited and thought about what I was going to do. How it was all for you. Although I didn't have much time to think because I already had it all planned out. When I caught sight of her, I grabbed her and pulled her to the ground. She was kicking and screaming, but in this point of her journey, no one was ever around. The archway led to an abandoned church, derelict church. I dragged her away from the path and to the building so that no witness intervene or find her body anytime soon. I did my routine of securing her arms and legs to a post, so I knew there wouldn't be much of a struggle. After that, I gagged her, a lot of noise for what I was about to do to her. I slowly pulled out my knife, making sure she caught a glimpse of its shiny glimmer. I placed a point of it on her lower leg and smiled as she reacted to the sharp point of the blade. I slowly pushed down, making sure the wound was clean as it slowly slipped into her flesh. It took a while, but eventually the knife handle was touching her skin. I took my time pulling it out, making sure the wound did not rupture with that easily recognized crimson liquid. That would have meant her death, and that would be too easy. As soon as the type of the knife exited her body, I immediately wrapped the split up with a bandage, applying enough pressure to cut the bleeding down to a minimum. I then placed the knife a little higher up her leg, doing the same thing. I turned to her eyes as she helplessly watched me do this over and over, all over her body. After every stab, I would say a remark I about how you didn't deserve what she did to you. Eventually, her whole body was nothing but red bandages. She was barely conscious as I slipped the final blow into her heart. I can imagine you're scurrying by now. In fact, I know you'll be. And I'll be close enough to hear it. And by you stopping, I know you've gotten this far into my letter. So I'll start making my way in. It's pretty easy to get into your house for the first few times. You probably thought it was your parents who left this note in your room in the first place. Nope. It was me.
Don't be afraid of the noises downstairs. It's only me. Put down the phone. I know by now you got it in your hand. But I've cut the phone lines. Don't bother calling your parents. If you haven't done so already, you see, I've already silenced them. You can stop your screaming now. I am always right outside your door. Unlock it now. And soon, it'll just be you and me. Together. Forever. Lots of love. Your secret admirer.